an old story that goes that Herd the Hunter, some time a keeper here in Windsor Forest, doth all the winter time, at still midnight, walk round about an oak with great ragged horns. And there he blasts the tree, and takes the cattle, and makes milk kind yield blood. You know of such a thing. And well, you know the superstitious, idle headed old did receive and deliver unto our age this tale of Herne the Hunter from truth. Shakespeare, from the Merry Wives of Windsor. We're not actually in Windsor here, I live in Sussex now, but I grew up in a town called Wokingham, not half an hour away from Windsor. Smack on the border between the parishes of Barkham and Finchampston. If you go there now, certainly the way we lived there when I was there, it's just yet another part of the great swathe of suburbs that go all the way from Swindon to London, but there are still fields, there are still woods. If you go the right way, those woods will take you all the way up into Windsor Forest. They say it was timber from Barker that made Windsor Castle, and it's in Windsor Forest that Herne the Hunter is supposed to have found. Later writers had it that he was a huntsman in the employ of Richard II, but he faced losing his job. And rather than be bereft of his place in society, and rather than lose his only living, he chose to hang himself on a branch of the oak tree. So he walks alone all the winter's night ever since. Later writers still would have it that he's especially seen at times of great national emergency. Now I wonder, would he have been seen maybe when at Finchampstead Ridges, just outside Finchampstead where I grew up, the young Henry VIII, before he was king, first laid eyes on Catherine of Aragon, the Spanish princess who was his first wife. The story goes that Henry VII, his father, was staying in Windsor for the hunting with his sons. When news came that the Spanish princess and her entourage were travelling through the neighbourhood on their way to court for the wedding. And so they thought, well, this is a good opportunity to the young betrothed couple to meet each other. It wasn't Henry himself at that point, it was his elder brother, Arthur, who was due to marry her. But of course there were standards in those days, great standards of propriety, correct behaviour that could not be ignored. It wouldn't do at all for them to actually speak before the wedding. So instead, a game was devised whereby Henry and his sons would be waiting just by the road over Finchampstead Ridges while the train of Spanish carriages came past. And as Catherine's carriage passed, the three riders at the side of the road, she lifted her veil so that Prince Arthur could see her face. Now, maybe Herne wasn't seen then, but maybe later, when Henry, Henry VIII now, King of England, brought Catherine and his entire court back to Finchampstead Ridges, they say, to recreate the incident, to show everybody how immoral and improper she had been to dare to raise her veil before she was married. Maybe Hearn would have been seen then. Maybe Dodwell's Well, not a mile or two away at Fleet Hill, would have run red with blood, as it was said to do also at times of great national crisis, knowing all the turbulent centuries that were to follow Henry's decision to break from Rome. Liberty and tyranny, conscience and judgment, and perhaps for the ordinary people of the country more than anything, the loss of the monasteries, the dissolution of the monasteries, which maybe were corrupt, maybe were inefficient, but for most people were all that stood between them and the loss of place in society a loss of a living. They would care for them in times of hardship, heal them in times of sickness. And this winter, just past, 
the very first coldest, darkest nights of the year. When the leader of Windsor Council drew our attention to another royal wedding, expected very soon, and the number of people without a place, without a living, sleeping on the streets of Windsor, and suggested that age-old traditions and laws be invoked to clear them out of sight. Well, I have no problem with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, I have quite a lot of respect for them, and I wish them well. And Dodwell's well. It's gone now, it was dug up by a workman digging a ditch in 1872. But if you go into the woods and the swamps of Finchampstead, you can still see water red as blood any day of the week. Heard the hunter still prowls in the forest.